Which shoe is better to hoop in? The New Balance Kawhi 2 or the Kawhi 1? Today we're putting the two most recent shoes from Kawhi Leonard's signature shoe line head to head to see how they compare. But really quick, if this is your first time checking us out, feel free to drop a follow or subscribe wherever you're watching and give this video a like. We would greatly appreciate that. So starting off with the box and the price, the Kawhi one is going to come in a white box with some gold font on top. You know, nothing too special, but still pretty clean. And then looking at the Kawhi 2s, this box is actually pretty dope. So, I mean, his nickname is The Claw. So they kind of worked his hands kind of around that New Balance logo. I just thought it came out really well. And then looking at the pricing, the Kawhi 1 is going to retail for $160, which is about as expensive as it gets whenever you're talking about the start to a shoe line. But luckily, they did stay at that same price for the Kawhi 2 model, which is also going to retail for $160. So it is going to be a little bit on the higher end for a starting spot for a shoe line, but still nothing too over the top. So looking at the appearance for these shoes and starting off with the colorways, today we're checking out the New Balance Kawhi 2 New Money versus the Kawhi 1 Moreno Valley. So on the Kawhi 1, I mean, I think these shoes did get off to a really clean start. This colorway actually honors Kawhi's hometown, Moreno Valley. So that's why they're gonna have that like official stamp from his city. And I thought that was a pretty cool little touch there, but kind of moving on down from there, from the tongue, underneath that, you're gonna see like a list of his accomplishments running underneath those laces. And then at the very bottom of that lacing setup, you're gonna see his jersey number, which is gonna be number two there so the big new balance logo on the heel for these though i think that gives these a really clean look and then the signature is going to show up right above that kind of around that ankle area so i mean just an overall nice design for this Kawhi one but now switching it over to the Kawhi two this is the new money colorway which actually was the first color to release on this model so you kind of get to see a nod to the declaration of independence along the back half of the shoe and it kind of wraps around like near the ankle as well and then you're going to have that gold plated new balance text on the heel which is honestly a really sick look I think that looks really nice and then above that you're going to have like the Roman numeral 2 which is going to be replacing his signature where his signature used to be at least on the Kawhi 1. And then they also kind of switched up the midsole on these just gave it more of a wavy look and I do actually like that but both of these shoes honestly came out really well especially for the first two shoes to start off a signature shoe line so now let's go ahead and see how they hold up on the court. For the materials and the support, the Kawhi 1 has a kinetic stitch thread application set up on the upper. And that's going to be there to kind of help you control your movements just on the court. And the materials are going to be one of the aspects to the shoe that's going to be a really good plus. Like the upper has some tiny holes that your foot can breathe. And I do like the suede touches that they put on the inside and like the outside pieces of the ankle. You know, a lot of shoe lines kind of went away from using anything like that. But as expected, the support is definitely going to be a strong point for this shoe. New, the New Balance logo on the heel kind of runs along the side and almost turns into a heel counter just to give you some added stability there and then the upper is just more than strong enough to keep you know your foot in place whenever you're making any type of like sharp cuts or movements but now moving it along to the Kawhi 2 these are going to have some different materials used and like a whole different setup being involved with this design so New Balance went with a fit weave light upper that's actually kind of marked out around the ankle. And this is designed to give you a targeted stretch and support with some extra lightweight feel. And the upper does feel more thin on this shoe just compared to the ones. So I mean, I guess you could say the ventilation is probably going to be better in that model. And then the support is still going to hold up really well. Pretty much all New Balance shoes have good support though, like not even just limiting it, limiting it to basketball shoes. I know their brand kind of tries to make it a priority for any type of model to have good support on it. But these do have like a lace up close your setup where the lacing system is just slightly on the inside of the shoe and that's just going to help lock your foot in there a little bit more and with the upper being thinner i mean it still doesn't move around more than it should i guess on any of your jabs or your step backs that's kind of what that whole targeted labeling was kind of meant to suggest there but the fit we light upper that is actually going to help bring the shoe down in weight i mean for a size 10 and a half it's only going to weigh 420 grams which is definitely going to be on the lighter side and it's going to be lighter than the Kawhi one which is going to weigh 476 grams for the same size there and you know neither shoe is going to be considered heavy but you can kind of feel the difference between these two shoes just whenever you hold them in your hand and then especially just on your foot whenever you're playing in the mall court. So now getting into more of the materials and the performance side and starting off with cushioning, the Kawhi 1 is going to get a New Balance Fuel Cell cushioning setup that's going to be in the midsole. It's going to be the same thing that was used in the Omnis shoes that Kawhi was playing in before he kind of started off his own line with New Balance. And these are going to have a full length outsole shank that's going to be there for some added stability and for some extra balance 
But these don't have as soft of a feel as I was maybe expecting or just kind of hoping for. I mean, from the second I put these on, I could tell it didn't feel at all similar to like, you know, a PG-5, a Trey Young, or like a Mellow Ball 1, where you're just gonna get, get that like immediate soft sensation. This is a shoe that is gonna require just a little bit more breaking time to really allow your foot to just adjust. And you know, a lot of the same things can be said for the Kawhi too. I mean, they get the same fuel cell foam midsole. You're gonna also have that outsole shank that runs, you know, from the length of the shoe to go along with it. And I don't think really a huge effort was made to turn this into a more comfortable shoe. I mean, my feet were pretty sore playing in these for the first time, but they did loosen up a little bit quicker than the ones did for me. And, you know, you know, thanks to some of the other materials that are kind of put into this Kawhi 2, I think they did end up feeling a little bit softer to play in. Both of these shoes do have really good responsiveness just on all your movements, but, you know, I wouldn't say that the cushioning is really a strong point for Kawhi shoe line just so far. So to finish off with traction, the Kawhi one gets a data-driven pattern that doesn't really follow any type of flow, but the traction actually is pretty solid. Like, they do tend to be like a little bit of a dust collector, but for the most part, they do grip the floor pretty well. And this is the first time I've seen New Balance actually use a setup like this, so I would say they do play better than some other brands that also use like a random traction pattern idea. But I do want to make sure you know it's not going to be anything crazy, but it is going to be above average. And I just say that because the Kawhi 2, they do actually have a little bit more of an organized pattern. You're going to see it's kind of close to our herringbone, herringbone pattern up in the front half. Just not quite. But I mean, they did not perform as well as I was hoping. Like, I definitely found myself sliding around a little bit too much. Like, on a dusty court, it was pretty rough, I'll say that. But I tested them out on a nicer court, too. They did play better there, but it's still not going to be up to par just compared to the Kawhi 1s. But to finish off with sizing, I mean... Both of these shoes are going to be pretty much perfect for the length with just a little bit of extra room out there. The Kawhi 1 is going to be a little bit wider than the Kawhi 2 model, so that is something to keep in mind just if you have wide feet or just, you know, like to have extra room playing. So for the final ratings and starting off with the appearance, that is a spot where New Balance is just doing a really good job on this line. Like both shoes look really good in my opinion. Even with them switching up the look between these two models pretty significantly, I am just going to go ahead and start off with a tie here. I think they both came out clean. But you know, as for cushioning, like I said, neither shoe is going to blow you away with like a super soft feel, but the Kawhi 2 does feel a little bit softer to play in. I think part of that is just thanks to the upper, just giving the shoe a better feel overall. So I'm going to start off with the Kawhi 2 there for the cushioning. And then as for the material, Materials. I mean, both of these shoes are going to get a lot of the same stuff being used. There really isn't a clear way to lean here, so I'm just going to keep that section as a tie. And then a lot of the same things can be said for the support. I haven't struggled on any movements within both of these models. You don't have like straps or outriggers on either design to kind of tip the scale one way, so I'm just going to keep that section as a tie too. But as for the traction, I am going to have to side with the Kawhi one. Like, it is a little bit like the lesser of two evils. Like, I don't mean to say like either of these shoes are bad, but they're not going to be top tier as far as traction. The Kawhi 2 just doesn't really give me what I was looking for it's like just as far as grip and stuff like that so this is one of the tougher choices I've had to make for the performance comparison but I am going to go with the rare tie for performance I do hate having to do that just like within a player's own shoe line it almost feels like I'm taking the easy way out but I mean I honestly do kind of feel that way about these shoes the Kawhi ones I mean it is going to have better traction and that is important you know that's a really big part of basketball while it's still going to be equal with support and the materials but I mean the Kawhi too while it does slip a little bit more it does offer like a more comfortable feel and it's also going to be lighter to just move around in so I mean between these two models you're going to want to pick out just what's more important to you between the cushioning and the traction and just probably go that way but I mean overall both of these shoes are nice and there is still some room to improve on both models. Thank you guys for taking some time to watch. If you want to buy the Kawhi 2 just go ahead and click the link on screen or check out the links below or in our bio for both shoes but until next review I'm Landon from Shoewear. Peace.